Hey there, it's Jim again. Um, one of the other things we uh, were going to talk about with porting was uh, muffler mods. And uh, when we're uh, doing our porting, often that also involves uh, reshaping the exhaust port, trying to optimize flow for our exhaust to get out of the cylinder. Uh, there's a little bit of science there, um, but uh, there's a lot of guys try to talk about back pressure, and uh, you'll notice when you uh, start looking at uh, the mufflers that come stock on your saws often, um, it seems like... Uh, Often there's a lot more focus on noise versus performance. Um, if you want to have something optimized for power, then there's going to be less consideration given to noise, or um, you can expect your saw is going to run louder um, in order to improve the uh, power that it makes. So with, uh, with this one, for example, this is what the stock muffler looked like. It had this one little tiny exhaust port in the top of it that uh, is not as big around as the tip of my finger is there. And uh, <clears throat> there's, a, there's a, another thing that'll come up and it's uh, these spark screens that uh, are uh, required to be in your saw. Normally, if you're gonna be working in a certain distance from a uh, provincial or state forest or crown land, um, in case a fire starts, um, or in an effort to reduce the potential of a fire starting because of the uh, <clears throat> hot pieces of carbon that can uh, blow out of the uh, motor. Um, the objective is for that screen to trap any of those hot embers inside the muffler and uh, prevent a fire from starting. Uh, years ago when I worked in uh, putting out forest fires, I'd attended three or four that uh, had been started uh, from pieces of carbon or hot metal or whatever. And so um, it's important to me to respect that, that requirement. Uh, if somebody's going to be uh, maybe bucking on a, on a landing in a sort yard or, uh, you know, well away from a forest or the potential of uh, starting a fire or maybe doing fall and burn in the winter where uh, everything's covered in snow, uh, then then that person has the opportunity or discretion, I guess, to, uh, to remove that screen. But uh, with that screen out, there's a pretty good opportunity for shit to get inside your muffler and potentially <clears throat> into the into the motor so um, whether that saws bounce around in the back of a pickup truck and got dust and gravel or bark or whatever else going in there or uh, in the winter it could be uh, snow so it just seems like a, a better idea in my mind to uh, make our <clears throat> muffler openings a little bit extra large to compensate for the area that we're losing um, that the screen takes up. So that's kind of what, what I do is try and incorporate that into what I do. Um, so yeah, so you'll see, for example, these are almost the same muffler. They're, they're both off either a uh, uh, still 044, 444, 60, something like that. Um, you can see on this one, I hope you can see on that one, there's a uh, very small hole at the back here. So that potentially would have been the only, whoops, the only exit for, for your exhaust. 
This one's an aftermarket, so it doesn't actually have the uh, slot and stuff for the screen in there. That's why it's sitting here. Um, but uh, when I when I do the modifications on these ones, um, like I was saying there with the screen with the screen out, so I pull that out and then uh, <clears throat> basically open it up to as much area as I can there. Um, and then reshape this exit as well to make sure that uh, everything that I've done with the tools ends up uh, smoothed off as well so that uh, you don't get cut on a jagged edge or whatever. And then uh, throw the screen back in after I'm done. And uh, that way I've more than addressed the... Uh, uh, flow there compared to what the uh, stock um, flow was. Let me put this back in later because uh, I'm going to get pretty distracted if I'm trying to talk about both at the same time here. So um, a lot of the uh, still 066s and 064s um, came with this style. Originally it was just a, uh, a very narrow type of an exit, kind of like this. <clears throat> so I can open those up again ensuring that the uh, spark screen goes back across there and I've basically increased this exit on here by three to four times the area um, so on the uh, 064 or 66 then I'd run that uh, dual port setup that way if you wanted kind of a factory type look <clears throat> I really enjoyed you'll see on some of my other builds on uh, either Instagram or on YouTube here, uh, Jim in the Mountains on Instagram or uh, or this channel. But uh, aluminum plate across here, um, I do those ones usually so that uh, I can put the spark arrestor screen in behind and then whatever kind of a uh, pipe or whatever that I'm going to have coming off that, I'll, uh, I'll set it up off that uh, extra plate very similar to what's on this uh, older Johnson Red. It's a 50cc saw, but again, uh, it uh, woke up really good. Not quite as good as the 353 that I did a couple of years ago, but uh, anyways, um, yeah. So I guess that's kind of kind of it without uh, belaboring things too much more but uh sky's the limit for you mostly um i mean you can